Let S be a non-empty subset of the real numbers, and X be an element in S. X is called a maximum of S, denoted by X equals max bracket S, if for all elements Y in S, X is greater than or equal to Y. X is called a minimum of S, denoted by X equals min bracket S, if for all elements Y in S, X is less than or equal to Y. Note that if S is a non-empty set, and negative S, which consists of elements negative little s, where little s is an element in S, then the maximum of S equals the negative of the minimum of S, and the minimum of S equals the negative of the maximum of S. Also, given a set S, which is a non-empty subset of the real numbers, the maximum and the minimum of S may not exist. For example, the set of elements x in the real numbers, such that x is greater than or equal to zero, has no maximum. Now we consider the open interval 0, 1. We want to say that 1 is a maximum of 0, 1, but this is not true as 1 is not an element in 0, 1. In fact, 0, 1 has no maximum or minimum. However, 1 is an important number for the set 0, 1, because no elements in 0, 1 are greater than or equal to 1. This motivates the following definition. Let S be a non-empty subset of the real numbers. S is called bounded above if there exists real number M such that, for all elements S in S, S is less than or equal to M. Such M is called an upper bound for S. S is called bounded below if there exists real number M such that, for all elements S in S, S is greater than or equal to M. Such M is called a lower bound for S. S is called bounded if it is bounded above and bounded below. Equivalently, S is bounded if there exists M greater than 0, such that for elements S and S, the absolute value of S is less than or equal to M. Let's look at some examples. The set of real numbers X, where X is greater than or equal to 0, is bounded below, where 0 is a lower bound, but not bounded above. The set of real numbers x, where x is less than or equal to 0, is bounded above, where 0 is an upper bound, but not bounded below. The open interval 0, 1 is bounded, where 0 is a lower bound, and 1 is an upper bound. Note that 1 is not the only upper bound for 0, 1. In fact, any real number, which is greater than or equal to 1, is an upper bound for 0, 1. So in some sense, 1 is the smallest upper bound. Let's give another definition. Suppose S is a non-empty subset of the real numbers, and it has an upper bound. The least upper bound, or supremum of S, denoted by sup bracket S, is the minimum of all the upper bounds, if it exists. In other words, real number C is the least upper bound for S, if the following two conditions hold. First, C is an upper bound for S. Second, if U is an upper bound for S, then C is less than or equal to U. Similarly, if S is a non-empty subset of the real numbers, and it has a lower bound, the greatest lower bound, or infimum of S, denoted by inf bracket S, is the maximum of all the lower bounds, if it exists. In other words, real number C is the greatest lower bound for S, if the following two conditions hold. First, C is a lower bound for S. Second, if L is a lower bound for S, then C is greater than or equal to L. Let's look at an example. Let S be the open interval 0, 1. Define the set T to be the set of X, where X is an upper bound for S. Then T is the set of real numbers Y, where y is greater than or equal to 1, which is the interval from 1 to infinity, including 1. Since 1 is the minimum of t, we have that the supremum of s equals 1. Now, we introduce the completeness axiom for the real numbers. Let s be a non-empty subset of the real numbers. If s has an upper bound, then s has a least upper bound. 
if S has a lower bound, then S has a greatest lower bound. This makes the discussion of supremums and infimums necessarily relevant for bounded sets. The following proposition gives us an alternative method to show that a real number is the least upper bound or the greatest lower bound for a set. Suppose S is a non-empty subset of the real numbers, and it has an upper bound. Real number C is the least upper bound for S, if and only if the following two conditions hold. First, C is an upper bound for S. Second, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists X in S, such that X is greater than C minus epsilon. Suppose S is a non-empty subset of the real numbers, and it has a lower bound. Real number C is the greatest lower bound for S, if and only if the following two conditions hold. First, C is a lower bound for S. Second, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists X in S such that X is less than C plus epsilon. For the proof, we will only prove the first point, because the second point is very similar. Suppose C is the least upper bound for S. By definition, C is an upper bound for S, so the first condition holds. Suppose the second condition is false. In other words, there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that for all x in S, x is less than or equal to C minus epsilon. Then C minus epsilon is a lower bound for S, which is less than C, and this is a contradiction. So the second condition holds. Conversely, suppose the two conditions hold for real number C. Let real number U be an upper bound for S. It suffices to show that C is less than or equal to U. Suppose this is not the case. In other words, C is greater than U. Now apply the second condition with epsilon equals C minus U, which is greater than zero. Then there exists X in S, such that X is greater than C minus bracket C minus U, which is equal to U. This implies that U is not an upper bound for S. This is a contradiction which completes the proof.